friends sorry that, uh, that first i spoke this paragraph of the scarecrow two times in my first part first i read this then i read this and then i read it again and then i read this sorry i thought that i have already read it but so please forgive me for that so now i'm going to show you my part two this was page number 15 where i stopped in my part one now i'm going to show you my part two and now my throat is of course very very nice and healthy so this is the page number 16 Hi friends, it's Anshu Madhulay. Nice. So friends, now I'm very very far away from it, Anshu, and I'm going to carry on with my story. Did you groan, Tin Woodman? Yes, I did. I have been groaning for more than a year. No one has ever heard me before or come here to help me. What can I do for you? Please get an oil can and oil my joints. They are rusted so badly, badly that I cannot move them at all. Dorothy at once ran back to the cottage and found an oil can. Then she returned and applied oil to the tin woodman's joint joints. So they oiled him on. So they all came until he could move freely. Oh, thank you, thank you! I might have stood here always, but you have saved. But you have saved my life. How did you happen to be here? This is, oh, sorry, friends. After this, this had to came but uh, come. But I read this. I'm really very really sorry. So I'm going to read now this. This is a great comfort. I have been holding that axe in the air ever since I rusted, and I'm glad to be able to put it down at least. At last, we are on our way to the Emerald City to see the Great Oz, and we stopped at your cottage to pass the night. Why do you wish to see Oz? I want him to send me back to Kanas, and the scarecrow wants him to plant a brain in his head. Do you think Oz could give me a heart? Yes, I guess so. It would be as easy as as easy as to give the scarecrow brains. True. So if you will allow me to join your party I will also go to the Emerald City and ask those to help me come along Tin Woodman asked Dorothy to put the oil can in her basket because if it rained he would rust again have you any brains No my head is quite empty but once i had brains and also a heart so having tried them both i would prefer to have a heart and why is that this is page number 17 now we are going to page number 18 i will tell you my story and then you will know I was born the son of woodman woodman who chopped down trees in the forest and sold the wood for a living when i grew up i too became a wood chopper after my father died i took care of my old mother as long as she lived then i made up my mind that instead of living alone I would marry so that I might not become lonely. I was oh sorry. There was a beautiful munchkin girl I knew. I grew to love with all my heart. She promised to marry me as soon as I could earn enough money to build a better house for her. Pitan she is shouting friends sorry but the girl lived with an old woman who did not want her to marry anyone. 
she was lazy and she wanted the girl to stay and do the cooking and housework so the old woman went to the wicked witch wicked witch of east and promised her two sheep and a cow two sheep and a cow if she would stop the marriage when the witch enchanted my axe uh, and when i was chopping some wood one day the axe slipped and cut off my left leg i knew a one leg man could not do uh, could not do very well as a woodcutter so i went to the tinsmith and made me a new leg out of tin the leg worked very well once i was used to it but my action angered the wicked witch of wicked witch of east for she had promised the old woodman woodman woman i would not marry marry the pretty munchkin girl when i began chopping again my axe slipped and i cut off my light right leg again i went to the tinsmith and again he made me a leg out of tin after this the enchanted axe cut off my arms one after the other but and but undaunted i had them replaced with tin ones the witch then made the axe slip and cut off my head at first i thought that was the end of me but the tin smith happened to come along and he built me a new head out of tin i thought i had be- we i had bitten beaten the wicked witch of the east then i thought i had beaten the wicked witch of the east then and i worked harder than even ever but i hardly knew how cruel my enemy could be she made my axe slip again and that it got right through my body cutting me into half once more the tin smith came to my help and made me a body of tin fastening my tin arms and legs and head to it by means of joints but the loss i now had no heart so i lost all my love for the munchkin girl and did not care whether i married her or not i guess she is still having with she is still living with the old women waiting for me to come to her oh no my body shone so brightly in the sun that i felt very proud of it and did not matter if my axe slipped for it could not cut me anymore there was only one danger something is roaring over here that my joints would rust but i kept an oil can in my cottage and took care to oil myself whenever i needed it however there came a day when i forgot to do this and being caught in the rainstorm i was left to stand in the woods finally you came here to help me roar roar while i was in love i was the happiest man on earth but he who has no heart cannot love and so i am resolved to ask oz to give me one if he does i will go back to the munchkin maiden and marry her now i will now i know why you are so anxious to get a new heart it feels like there is an animal around <sighs> in fact very close roar 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 <gasps> do not worry dorsey i am not scared as long as i have my oil can nothing can hurt the scarecrow and the mark of the good witch's kiss on your forehead will protect you from harm
but the tin woodman's predictions were not were soon proven wrong with one blow of his paw the lion sent scarecrow spinning over to the edge of the road then he struck struck the tin woodman's with a with a sharp claws but to the lion's surprise he could make no impression on the tin although the tin woodman fell over the ground and lay still toto now that he had an enemy to face ran barking towards the lion dorothy fearing toto would be killed and heedless of danger rushed forward and slapped the lion on his nose as hard as she could don't dare to bite toto you should be ashamed of yourself to bite a poor little dog you are nothing but a coward i've always known it but how can i help it you can i am going to the great oz to ask him to give me some brains and i am going to ask him to send toto and me back to kanas and i am asking and i am going to ask him for a heart then if you don't mind i'll go with you for my life is simply unbearable without courage you are welcome so once more the little company set off on the journey they camped that night and set off early the next morning after walking for a while they came to the great ditch it was decided that the cowardly lion should carry them all across on his back one at a time when all of them had reached the other side they sat down to give the beast a chance to rest soon after they resumed their journey they were they heard strange noises in the depths of the forest the kalidas live in this part of the forest they are monstrous beasts with bodies like bears and heads like tiger tigers and with claws so long and sharp that they could tear me into two they could tear me into two we must get away from here as fast as we can they increased their pace but soon came another gulf across the road this one was so broad and so deep that line knew it once he could not leap across it roar they are the kalidas No wonder you were scared of them. They are dreadful beasts. What should we do? So these are the kalidas. Here is a great tree. If the tin woodman can chop it down, it will fall to the other side and we can cross it easily. That is a first rate idea. One would almost suspect you had brains in your head instead of straw. The woodman said to work, and his axe was so sharp that the tree was soon chopped nearly through. The lion, although he was certainly scared, turned his face to Kalidas and gave them a loud, terrible roar. It was so loud and terrible that Scarecrow fell over backward. While even the fear the fears be stopped short and looked at him in surprise. Ah! Quick, Tin Woodman, they are getting close. Roar, groan, crash. The Kalidas stepped back for a moment, but seeing they were bigger than the lion and remembering that there were two of them and only one of him, they again rushed forward. The Tin Woodman had successfully felled the tree, and all of them rushed to the other side. Quick, let us cross over! But the Kalhidas were quick to join them. We are lost, for they will surely tear us into pieces with their sharp claws. But stand close behind me, and I will fight them as long as I am alive.
Wait a minute. Tin Woodman, can you chop away at our end of the tree right away? The Tin Woodman began to use his axe at once. Just as the two Kalidas were near across, nearly across, crash, snap, crash, snap, the tree fell into the gulf, carrying the ugly, snarling brutes with it, and both were dashed in pieces to the sharp rocks at the bottom. These are the sharp bottom rocks. The adventure made the travelers more anxious than ever to get out of the forest. To their great joy, the trees became thinner and farther they advanced. And in the afternoon, they suddenly reached a broad river. On the other side of the water, they could see the yellow brick road running through a beautiful country. They were very happy to see this delightful country before them. How will we cross this river? That is easy. The Tin Woodman must build us a raft so we can float on the other side. So the Tin Woodman took his ass and began to chop down small trees to make a raft. He worked all night. The next morning, when the cowardly lion slept, stepped on the rough stick, tipped badly, for he was big and heavy. But the scarecrow and the tin woodman stood on the other end to steady it. They got along pretty well after, well at first, but when they reached the middle of the river, the swift currently swept the raft downstream, farther and farther away. From the road of yellow bricks. This is bad. If we cannot get to the land, we will be carried into the country of Wicked Witch of the East Best, and she will enchant us and make her slaves. We must certainly get to the Emerald City. If we. Oh, oh! Scarecrow pushed so hard on his. On his long pole that it stuck fast in the mud of the bottom of the river. Then, before he could pull it out or let go, the raft was swept away. The poor scarecrow and the poor scarecrow, the poor and the poor scarecrow was left clinging to the pole in the middle of the river. Goodbye. Down the stream, the raft floated and the poor scarecrow was left far behind. Something must be done to save us. I think I can swim to the shore and pull out, pull the raft after me. You hold tight to step off my tip of my tail. The cowardly lion began to swim with all his might towards the shore. Although he was so big, it was hard work. By and by, they were drawn, drawn out of the current, and then Dorothy took the Tin Woodman's long pole and helped push out the raft to the land. They were all tired when they stepped off the pretty green grass, especially, especially the lion. What will we do now? You must get back to the road somehow. The best plan will be to walk along to the river bank until we came to the road again. That will also help us to look for the scarecrow. They also knew that the stream had carried them a long way past the road of the yellow bricks and led to the Emerald City. So friends, again you will have to wait for my part 3, the wonderful visit of Oz. Until then, if you want me to share you with this, with the part 3, you will have to subscribe my channel.